So we've seen that there are two different kinds of behavior that friction undergoes. There's static friction and kinetic friction. So in practice, if we want to actually figure out how big is the friction, we have to figure out whether we're looking at static or kinetic friction. Okay, so let's start with kinetic friction because that one's a little simpler. So kinetic friction, which we usually write as an F with a little subscript K, um, is basically constant. Okay. Um, one thing that it does depend on, though, is the normal force. So we looked at a situation where we had a block and a tension that was pulling on the block like this, and we found that the friction that was present could change uh, depending on how we um, pulled on the tension. But once the tension was enough to overcome the static friction, then the, the kinetic friction was constant. One thing that can adjust that, though, is the normal force. So if you imagine that you um, push down on this block, okay, there's a hand pushing downward on the block, then what that's going to mean is the normal force on the block um, by the surface is larger, and that means that the friction force is also larger. Okay, um, and it turns out that those two things are proportional to each other. So if you put um, a huge weight on top of the block so that the normal force on the block is twice as big, the friction becomes twice as big. Okay, so um, the way that we can write that is that the kinetic friction on the block by the surface is equal to some constant times the normal force on the block by the surface. Okay. And the thing that's important to notice here is that these on and by match. So anytime we have a friction force um, with an on and by, there's always going to be a corresponding normal force with the same on and the same by. Um, okay, so what is that constant of proportionality? Well, um, the way we often write this, um, especially for people who um, aren't as careful about always including subscripts as I try to be, um, is the kinetic friction FK is equal to mu K times N. Okay, so this is a Greek letter mu. It's basically a cursive U with a long tail in the front. Um, it's, a, it's a Greek M, essentially, um, but it's spelled mu, and we call this um, this constant, in, in this case, the coefficient of kinetic friction. Okay, um, and that's mu k specifically. All right, so if you know the normal force, then, uh, and you know the, the coefficient of kinetic friction, you can just calculate the friction, and you're done. Um, some of the things that uh, the friction force does not depend on, that it seems like it should depend on, um, are the following. So friction does not depend on the speed. Okay, so I think you would predict, and I would certainly have predicted, that if you have the block moving faster along the surface, you would have more friction, but that isn't true. Regardless of the speed, the um, friction is going to stay the same. Another thing that is kind of surprising to me is that the friction does not depend on the area in contact. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Um, if I take a block like this, and I have some tension on it. Um, if I turn the block sideways, so there's a smaller area in contact, like this, and I do the same experiment, um, it turns out you get the exact same friction. Okay, so as I mentioned, I think that this seems really counterintuitive, um, but one of my colleagues is a mountain climber, um, and he assures me that this is actually really true in practice. So if you can get even a tiny toehold, um, you're able to cling to the side of a mountain, just like um, if you had a nice solid toehold, because um, your friction that you can you know, have between your foot and the, the toe hold is the same no matter how big it is. So this is apparently true, and depending on your life experience, you may think this seems a little more or less surprising than, than I do. Um, one other thing that the friction does depend on is the material. Okay, and I think this one seems relatively straightforward. Um, the reason we use um, rubber in tires is because there's a really high coefficient of friction between rubber and asphalt. Um, you know, things that we want there to be um, sliding, like for instance, the, the surfaces inside an engine, those have really low friction and we use lubricants to get them even lower friction. Um, but things like rocks and rubber, those have really high coefficients of friction. Um, gravel is going to have a really high coefficient of friction when something, you know, like rubber is, is in contact with it. Okay, so these all are the considerations that go into the kinetic friction. Um, essentially, you just need to know the normal force and the coefficient of kinetic friction for whatever materials are, are present. Um, what about static friction? So we know that static friction um, is going to depend on the situation. So the static friction isn't something we can typically just calculate based on looking up the coefficient in a book and like knowing the normal force. We have to know everything else that's going on in a problem. But there is a thing that we can calculate that way, and that is the maximum static friction. Okay, so the maximum static friction um, that the static friction cannot exceed is given by a very similar formula to the one that we had before. So we have a coefficient of static friction times the normal force. Okay, and again, it's still going to have the subscripts matching. Okay, so the Fs max um, on the block by the surface, let's say, is equal to mu s times the normal force on the block by the surface. So again, we're always going to be matching the on and by. Um, if you have multiple frictions, multiple normal forces in a problem, then um, you can always tell which one corresponds to which because you're matching the subscripts. Um, another way that we sometimes write this is um, 
the static friction is less than or equal to mu s times n. Um, I'm not as crazy about this particular notation because I think it makes it seem like we have no idea what the um, static friction is. Um, these two things say the same thing, but ultimately what you're able to calculate is the maximum possible static friction, um, which means that the real static friction will be less than or equal to that amount. Um, typically, um, mu s is going to be bigger than mu k. Um, it can't really go the other direction just based on the way that friction works, um, but they could in principle be equal or about equal. Um, and the sorts of numbers that you typically see are going to be in between zero to one for both of these. Um, there's no reason why a friction coefficient couldn't go above one. It's just pretty uncommon. So the highest that you typically see would be something like one, but a really common range for these would be something like 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 or so. Um, and so um, if you're looking at um, a friction coefficient that's like 0 0.01, that's an extremely slippery, probably highly lubricated surface. Um, if you're looking at something that's more like 0 0.8 or 0 0.9, that's going to be something where we want really high friction, like for instance, between tires and road.